Mara, I've been looking at the accounts, and it seems we're facing some serious financial challenges. I know, Mama. With my illness and the trading group turning their backs on me, it's been difficult to make ends meet. Things may get harder before they get better. We can't lose hope, my dear. God always provides for his children, even in the darkest of times. I know you're right, Mama. We just have to trust in him and his timing. Grandma, are we going to have enough food to eat this week? Don't worry, sweetheart. God will take care of us. We just need to have faith. Dinner is ready. Let us pray before we serve the rest of the family. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your provision and your faithfulness. Please guide us through these difficult times and help us to trust in your goodness and grace. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Our electricity and water supplies will soon be cut off. We're going to have to go back to basics, Mum Nakakand. We'll use candles and solar lamps for lighting, cook on the fire outside or in the mud kitchen, and start fetching firewood again. Yes, and we'll need to fill several drums with water so we don't have to fetch it daily from the stream. Plus, we'll have to join food donation queues and ask to glean other people's fields. Exactly, and all of us who are unemployed need to find work, become self-employed, or form a group to work on people's fields until we find better means to make money. Despite being voted out of the women's cross-border trading group, I still trust the Lord to make a way for me to leave Akeke's house. I just need to seek funding or donations to travel to Novistria, find a place to stay, and continue with my business. I sympathize with you, Namara, but we need to be realistic. If it's hard to find money for food and bills, how will you manage to find money to restart your business? I choose to trust in the Lord and pray for a miracle. Namara and her family joined their fellow church members for a potluck lunch in the fellowship hall. Despite their recent struggles, they are greeted warmly by their brothers and sisters in Christ. Namara, it's good to see you here today. How have you been holding up? Thank you, Elder James. It's been tough, but we're taking it one day at a time. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. We're here to support you and lift you up in prayer. Namara's children run off to join their friends, while Nakakand engages in conversation with other church members. Namara finds herself drawn into a circle of women, sharing their own struggles and victories. Namara, I heard about what happened with the trading group. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Sister Esther. It's been difficult, but I'm finding strength in God and in the support of our church family. We're here for you, Namara. Whatever you need, just let us know. Thank you, sister-in-law, Inzira. Namara feels a sense of warmth and belonging wash over her as she realizes the depth of love and fellowship within her Christian community. Together, they pray, share meals, and offer words of encouragement, united in their faith and commitment to doing God's work. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to uplift Namara and her family in prayer as they navigate these challenging times. May God's grace and provision be evident in their lives, and may they be a testimony to his faithfulness. As the fellowship continues, Namara and her family are enveloped in a sense of peace and gratitude, knowing that they are surrounded by a community of believers who will walk with them through every trial and victory. A few days later... <clears throat> Namara, I want you and your kids out of this house as soon as you fully recover. You've caused enough trouble, and I have no use for you anymore. If you leave, it will be four less mouths to feed. In addition, your children will go hungry if they stay here. Where do you expect me to go, Akeke? I told you that I will be leaving but I need some time to fully recover from my illness, find a way to resolve the issues I have with the cross-border trading women's group, and find my own place to live. That's not my concern. You should have thought about that before you decided to expose me to the whole village. The Lord will take care of us, Akeke. I have faith in his provision. You're delusional if you think God will provide for you. Your business is over, and you have nothing left. I've had enough, Akeke. I won't stay here a moment longer than necessary. 
The longer I stay in this house with you, the angrier and more hurt I become. Okek braces himself for Nagmar to plead and beg to stay, but instead, she surprises him with her resolve. The Lord will provide us with shelter, Okeke. God has promised to never leave nor forsake me, and I trust in his faithfulness. A month later. Namara, I've made my decision. You and the kids need to leave. I know that you are not yet done with your treatment but you look well to me. Just leave, I can't continue to live with a woman who keeps threatening to leave me every day. Leave now and create room for someone else. Ekeke, please, we have nowhere to go. We're your family. Not anymore. I can't take care of you all. I have my own problems to deal with. Namara's heart sinks as she realizes the depth of Okek's callousness. She takes a deep breath, stealing herself to face the harsh reality. You're just going to throw us out like this, after everything we've been through. You brought this on yourself, Namara. I can't continue to deal with your issues. Fine, Okeke, we'll leave, but know this, I won't let your cruelty break me. I'll find a way to provide for my children, with or without your help. Just go. Waswa, I can't believe the dad has chased us out of the house. Where will we go, twin bro? Yeah, it's really hard to remain optimistic in a situation like this one but we need to trust God. He will make a way for us. Yes bro, always keep in mind that our words hold immense power over life and death. Let's be mindful of what we speak, and in the name of Jesus, let's nullify any negative thoughts and words from the past, present, and future. Together, let's pray and affirm that everything will turn out fine. This situation will work for our good in Jesus' name. Amen. It's important to maintain joyfulness consistently and to surrender all our worries and burdens to the Lord because He cares for us. It is written that in every circumstance, we should give thanks. Therefore, we give thanks to God for this situation, knowing that the Lord is working it out for our good. Mum should actually leave Dad. Dad needs to sort his life out, and giving him space might help him realize his mistakes. In fact, we all need a fresh start elsewhere. It'll be tough initially, but I believe things will improve with time. Yes, let's pray for wisdom, strength, guidance, protection, and abundant blessings as we enter this new chapter. May our faith remain unwavering, and may Mom Namara receive strength, wisdom, and supernatural blessings. We declare perseverance in school, freedom from hunger or homelessness, and abundance in all things. Yes, Kato. Let's find a quiet place to pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, acknowledging your sovereignty over our lives. As we embark on this new chapter, we humbly ask for your wisdom to guide our steps, your strength to uphold us, and your divine protection to surround us. Grant us, Lord, the grace to walk in unwavering faith, trusting in your promises even when we cannot see the way ahead. May our faith never waver, but grow stronger with each passing day. We lift up Mom Namara to you, asking for your continued strength and wisdom to be upon her. Open doors of blessings in her life, Lord, that she may experience your supernatural provision and favor. Finally, we declare your promises over our lives, affirming that we will not falter in our education, that we will never go hungry, be without shelter, or lack any good thing, for you are our provider and sustainer. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. 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 Kansim, you're here. Yes, Kato, Waswa. I think it's time we spend some time meditating on scripture. We need to find verses that will uplift us and strengthen our faith. I agree, Kansim. Let's find verses that resonate with our situation and give us hope, no matter what challenges we're facing. Yes. What do you think, Waswa? How about we start with Psalm 46, 1-3. God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. That's a powerful one, Waswa. It reminds us that no matter what chaos surrounds us, God is our refuge and strength. Yes, and let's also meditate on Romans 8:28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Yes, that verse brings so much reassurance. It reminds us that even in the midst of trials, God is working everything out for our good. Amen. 
Lastly, let's reflect on Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Amen, can see me. This verse reminds us to hold on to our faith, even when we can't see the outcome. It's our confidence in God's promises. Let's take some time to meditate on these verses, Waswar and Kato. May they strengthen our faith and trust in God, no matter the situation we face. Amen. <laughs> Namara, where will you go? You and the children can't just wander the streets. I don't know yet, Mama Nakakand, but I trust that God will provide a way for us. Lord Jesus, please help me. My children and I need to find accommodation fast. We need a safe and comfortable place to stay. Please provide the funds to enable me to start my business in Novastria again. I know I will be fine with or without the cross-border trading women's group. I receive what I asked you for. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. As Namara speaks, a business card falls from the shelves to the floor. She picks it up, her eyes widening with realization. What's that? A business card? I know what I will do. I'll go to God's house, the church. He will never turn us away. But, Namara... Nakakand looks puzzled, unsure of what Namara means. She casts a wary glance at her keck, who stands in stony silence. Enough, Mama Nakakand. This is none of your business. Nakakand hesitates, torn between her loyalty to her son and her concern for Namara and the children. She knows confronting Okek could lead to trouble, but she can't bear to stand by and watch the injustice unfold. Namara, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. We may not be able to solve all your problems, but we'll do whatever we can to help. Yes, Mum. Thank you. Namara nods gratefully, her faith unwavering despite the uncertainty of her situation. As she prepares to leave with her children, Nakakand watches with a heavy heart, praying for God's protection and provision for them all. You will all be fine, my dear. We serve a mighty God. All things are possible with God. Amen. Namara stands before Akek, her expression resolute as she holds out a legal document. Akeke, I need you to relinquish your rights to the children. I will even change their surname to mine. After all, I am the one who has been providing for them since birth. Gladly, they're nothing but a burden to me anyway. Namara's heart aches at Okek's callous words, but she remains steadfast in her determination. Show me where I should sign. Thank you for lifting a huge burden off my shoulders. Sign here and there. Mum Nakakand, brother-in-law Mugerua, please sign as witnesses. Nakakand and Mugerua nod solemnly, understanding the gravity of the situation. They signed the document, their expressions reflecting a mixture of sadness and relief. Namara, I'll obtain the necessary affidavits from the elders for the traditional court and police chief. Considering OKK's actions, particularly his breach of trust after promising not to cheat again, including throwing you and the kids out at night, I believe the elders will readily support any document facilitating your full custody of the children. I will help you, mother. OKK will regret this one day. Thank you, Mum Nakakand. While Akeke has relinquished his rights to visit the children, the rest of the family is free to visit us. Namara takes the document and slips it into her bag, her mind already racing with plans for the next steps. Thank you, Namara. I am, however, still worried about where you and the kids will spend the night. Maybe my husband can convince Okiki to let you stay here for a few more days, that is, until you find alternative accommodation. No. Mother-in-law, it's time I left this place. I can't stay in this farce of a marriage any longer. Excuse me for a moment. I need to make a call. Namara retrieves her phone and dials a number, her heart pounding with anticipation as she waits for the call to connect. Hello. 
Nansabuga, it's Namara. I need your help. As Namara speaks to Nansabuga, outlining her plans and explaining her desperate need for assistance, a sense of relief washes over her. With Nansabuga's support, she knows she and her children will not be alone in this journey. Namara, as you know, I'm currently on its all overseas. While our ministry's shelter is full, I'll speak to the general overseer to allow you to stay behind the church's premises until we secure alternative accommodation. You're welcome to use the back room until Friday, by which time I hope to have found you a new place. Feel free to enjoy complimentary meals in our cafeteria. Thank you very much, Nansabuga. We'll start heading to the church's office. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to go. Yes, Mum says that the pastor has volunteered to pick us up and drop us off at the church. Yes, let's find Kansim and start heading to the church building. I hope we'll have our own home soon. Yes, God will make a way. Goodbye, Grandma. Goodbye, everyone. Mother-in-law, I will see you soon. Please send me a message as soon as you get all of the elders to sign the affidavit. We will be staying at the church's premises this week. All right, my dear. I will miss you all. As for you, Akeke, I want you to know that I have forgiven you for everything. I am thankful that I am now free. For your information, the kids and I found accommodation. I told you that the Lord Jesus Christ will make a way for us. Akeke read Galatians 6 verse 7. Namara, I don't have time to play games, just tell me already. What does Galatians 6 verse 7 say? Goodbye Akeke, I hope our paths never cross again. Son, you didn't do the right thing. Let me share the verse that Namara asked you to read. Galatians 6, 7 KJV says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Thank you for watching this episode of Namara. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. Subscribing ensures that you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share our content. Thank you for your support. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Proverbs 3, 5-6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Philippians 4, 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Psalm 23, 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Psalm 91, 4 to 6 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flitteth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, and not be weary. And they shall walk, and not faint. Joshua 1, 9 says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, 
we are reminded of your sovereignty and faithfulness in every situation. We thank you for the assurance that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Your promises sustain us, and we lean on your unfailing word for guidance and strength. Lord, we lift up our needs and concerns to you, knowing that you are our provider and protector. Grant us wisdom to navigate through the challenges we face and strength to persevere in faith. Help us to trust in your perfect timing and to lean not on our own understanding, but to acknowledge you in all our ways. We pray for those in difficult circumstances, that you would surround them with your peace and comfort. Provide for their needs and grant them the assurance of your presence with them. May your love and grace abound in our lives, guiding us each step of the way. Help us to walk in obedience to your will and to shine your light in a world filled with darkness. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.